Commander, Hail Ming approaching. What do you mean, Hail Ming approaching? More rocket Ajax is on our screen and heading right for us. Secure all posts. Raise all shields. Fire all lasers. Cue the music. Welcome to another mind-numbingly incredible episode of the Hell Ming Power Hour. That's yeah. right, we're back for another show. Hope you've been listening to our Mandalorian show. We've got going on it's a little side business we got going on. We shoved some stuff to the side, yeah, and we're having fun with that. So if you don't know who we are, I am Rick Morgan right here, sitting in front of the computer, and I'm here with my brother, as always, Mister Danny Bennett. What's going on, man? Man, I'm I'm here with you. We're about to talk about one of my favorite movies, and I'm jazzed because we've got a third guest and also special guest. Also special guest. Name is on the marquee. From the good, the bad, the weird, and the cheesy, we've got Matthew Tangent here. Hey, Matthew, what's going on? Hey, guys. Yeah, going good, man. The Angry Ginger. <laughs> yeah. Glad to finally be so- on here. And the reason he says that is because I think back five years ago, we said, hey, man, you're to come on the show sometime. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like us. Oh, So we're finally making that happen, and the stars aligned, and uh, Ming gave us permission. So here we are, man. We've got, uh, we've got Matthew as a guest. And uh, if you don't know who Matt is, I mean, like I said, we uh, early on, you were kind of hanging around and making comments on our crappy shows, which we appreciate. And... Uh, Lo and behold, he uh, decided to do his own show, and tell us tell us a little bit about that show, Matt. Yeah, so I cover, basically I cover cheesy movies from all genres, because I didn't want to just stick with horror. There's a lot of horror podcasts, but I wanted to still have that option. But I basically just cover cheesy movies that I like, and then try to get people on board for them. Well, and you know, that that that's absolutely the way you should do it. Like, you should love a movie, and then try and get other people to love a movie. I feel like that's way better than bagging on stuff. I mean, it can be really fun to tear something down, but what's even better is to find something that everybody can enjoy and say, have you ever heard of this? I love it when people come up and they say, I had never heard of that. And then I watched it because you guys brought it up. I mean, it's just, that, that just, that's what I'm in doing this for. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what was the, the, the main spirit behind what we wanted to do. And I think it's what got people's attention was here we are on a horror network, but we're not pigeonholed to just doing the horror stuff. We we like a lot of different stuff, and it's hard to come up with something that allows you to do that. So kudos on that, man, because it's easy to get pigeonholed. And personally, I like the show myself because I, I like I like me some bad movies. <laughs> and let me let me just jump out there and say it's not the good, the bad, the weird, and the cheesy. I got I got possessed by the spirit of of Clint Eastwood there. <laughs> it's the bad, it's the bad, the weird, and the cheesy. Thanks, man. It just you know like yeah. I, I after I said it, I was like, wait, is that no? It's not right. So I just wanted to come back and and, and clarify because I mean again, it's in the spirit of what we do. It's bringing the joy of movies you may have never heard of to the forefront so that you can enjoy them and we can all share that together. I love it. Yeah. I, I really, I'm really glad you've been a fan of our show forever. It's it's awesome to have you know made friends doing this. I mean, it's, it's just the best because I never would have met half these people if we didn't start this and if Rick hadn't said, 
hey, you know, we have these things called podcasts, and I think we could do one. Um, <laughs> That's literally how it started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I, I was like, what? <laughs> and you were like, wait a minute, you mean like UHF, but just in audio form. I'm exactly. like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yeah, I think I didn't. Uh, I didn't start. I listened to started listening to podcasts like because of you guys. Because I think I was in a horror group and and Ricky was like, "Hey, I'm gonna do. I'm doing this <laughs> podcast thing. Come over here and check this out." And I'm like, "I don't know what a podcast is. I'll go. I mean, I've heard of them, but I'll go. I'll be able to check it out." <laughs> Man, yeah. you wouldn't believe how many times we've had conversations about things that you've posted, things you've done, and we're just like, man, Matthew's just the coolest dude. So, yeah, we're happy about having you on here, too, and it's a shame we haven't done it earlier, but that's kind of the spirit of how we do this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty erratic, thought... too. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I think we all have. I mean, I, I, I dropped out for a while, and Rick dropped out for a while, and Mark came on for a while. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's not our primary business. We, we try and live life every day, but it's a great hobby, and we're just trying to put it all out there. So yeah, I get that. Sure enough, I couldn't think of a better movie to come in on this one though. This, this, I'm gonna, I'm jazzed about this movie. I could tell all week you were kind of hyped on this one, so it's it's gonna be good for sure, man. But uh, before we do that, you know what we gotta do, man? We gotta recap. So it's time for what did you watch, y'all? What did What did you watch? Well, you know, I, I did actually check something out this week. It was... Um, Hold on. Was, I love the fact that every time it starts off with, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Um, so I watched a, a documentary called uh, Calling Sarah Connor. That was... Uh, you, you know, we all know James Cameron's blockbuster 1984 film, The Terminator. Well, well you didn't realize it, it. Was ba- it was based on a true story. Right. And this is the actual events that led to it. There was a lost purse that was found in the Philadelphia train station by an um, Austrian immigrant uh, who was an exterminator. And he uh, he tried to find the, the owner, uh, one Sarah Connor. He looked her up in the phone book. And, you know, when he got there, she was out for something. And her roommate said, uh, she's not here. And he said, uh, I'll be back. I didn't say it was a good documentary. But it was very entertaining. But it's loosely based. The story is loosely based on this incident. James Cameron heard about it and said, you know what? I've got an idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, calling Sarah so Connor. So, for you, for you that don't know, we contacted <laughs> each other earlier this morning. He said, oh, yeah, I'll have time to work up something. But what did you watch? <laughs> hey, man. I, and this I did, is what we get. <laughs> and I did. And I did. I worked something. <laughs> uh, shut up, man. I mean, I'm All laughing. Right, That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 see if Matthew Matthew did you watch anything this week? Yeah, I guess funny enough, you brought up Tubi because I found this one Tubi. Um, nice. <laughs> it's called uh, Corrupt, "Corrupted Data: My Life After the Enterprise." So it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a sad show. Um, so nobody wanted a friendly f- a robot after after this the show. Next Generation ended. If anybody's ever heard of that show, oh, yeah. um, all they wanted was killbots and cyborgs and all that. So he he went around for a while trying to find jobs, couldn't find anything. He ended up turning to cooking meth, as we all do. And uh, and by cooking meth, he had actually stolen a replicator from the ship. So he was even going cheap on that. Oh man! Next, it was prostitution. But I won't go into that. And no. in, in in the end, uh, it's kind of a touching story because he ends up becoming tech support for Microsoft. So, and fell <laughs> on hard times. Hands hands, goes hand in hand with the the whole meth thing. So that makes perfect sense. <laughs> that can lead. That leads down to a dark path, man. But what about Data's <laughs> evil twin brother, Lore? You know, chi- child <laughs> actors and robots just don't do well after you know movies end and shows. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> So, and you said it's on Tubi, right? Is that uh... yeah, Tubi? All right, well, cool, man. Y'all, y'all can uh, look that one up and uh, enjoy the the follies. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. 
Oh. Well, I got to watch a movie that I kind of hate the first two movies of this series, but I kind of enjoyed this one, and this one's called Grease 3, The Annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's, a, it's a weird culmination where they get the cast from both Grease 1 and Grease 2 to come together. And it ends up being a winner-take-all battle. But it comes down to the final match where Olivia Newton-John beats the crap out of Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> then, they all, then they all start singing a crappy song together till Tina Turner shows up as the Acid Queen and kills them all. <laughs> that one's on the Disney Channel, by the way. Nice. Hey, is, yeah. there, is there a dance-off? There's got to be a dance-off, right? Yes. Pink ladies. Yeah. yeah, the pink ladies dance off. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's where Olivia Newton John just pretty much just bitch smacks Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> well, go Grease Lightning. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it to me it redeemed itself. I think the, the diehard Grease fans are not going to like it. But for a person that hates Grease, this one, uh, this one's pretty good. <laughs> you know they really shifted the paradigm. It sounds it sounds like it's a winner take all kind of kind of brawl for the uh, the audience's attention. And I'm I'm on board. Where did you see that again? Disney Plus. It's on, on on Disney. Yeah, it's on the Disney Channel. So nice. Uh, you know, so if your subscription has run out, you may want to re sign up because uh, you don't want to miss you know Tina Turner coming out and killing everybody at the end. So I'm crossing my fingers for a cameo appearance by Zendaya. It's very possible. Yay. <laughs> All right, anybody got anything else? Nah, that's it. No. Nope. Thank the Lord. That's it for <laughs> What Did You Watch? Ya? What did you watch? Did you watch stuff? <laughs> All right, folks, we'll be right back after this. Uh, the Hail Ming Power Hour is brought to you by Deep Fried Critter Fritters, the only fritters that bite back, a hungry heifer exclusive, and loyal subjects of Mongo like you. Hail Ming! All right, folks, welcome back. It is time to jump into the time machine and go check out, what year is this? 90... 1997. 97. 97, The Cube, or just Cube, Mary's where you come from. I think in France it's called The Cube. And, but, uh, uh, you know, look. <laughs> yeah, Le Cube. Uh, but before we do that, you know we have to buy extra kerosene. To keep this machine running. <laughs> it runs on kerosene. <laughs> right. Uh, we also have to feed the time chicken, and that time chicken chow is not cheap. You know what? He's getting bigger, and that's a problem because he demands more feed. So, if you will, folks, I mean, we, we've got this going on right here with the sponsors, but we may have to start a Patreon just to raise money to, to keep feeding the Super Cluck because he's, he's really overweight, but he's not exercising by any means. So... Folks, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to sponsors. Danny, you got us a sponsor for this week. I'm I, hoping you put a lot of time into that one, too. I, I do have a sponsor, and I did put a lot of time into it. And, and I just want to say they gave me some, uh, they gave me some uh, text to read here on the recording, so I'm just going to go into that now. I'm going to say that uh, our sponsor is Trinity Sutherland's 24-7 Lumberjacks. Do you suffer from insomnia due to too much placid silence? Do you lie awake in bed yearning for a lullaby crooned by gentle buzz of logging with chainsaws? Relief is just a phone call away. With Trinity Sutherland's 24-7 Lumberjacks, you can be snoozing through the night and enjoying a backyard or or enjoying a backyard barbecue to the melodic ministrations of gas-powered industrial wood-cutting equipment and the grunts and banter of 100% certified Lumberjacks. This and uh, this can all be yours anytime, any place. Just call Trinity Sutherland's twenty four seven lumberjacks today at one eight hundred B U Z Z Z Z Z. That's one eight hundred Buzz. Twenty four seven lumberjacks. Twenty four seven lumberjacks. There's supply and demand right there. It's for you, Trinity <laughs> Sutherland. It's from you, Trucker Trin. 
Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> He's getting a lot of business. I think he had one a few weeks ago, too, didn't he? One what? Maybe that one must have failed, and he started the new business. <laughs> He's always hustling. He's got the hashtags uh, going and everything. They need to secure uh, a jackal for their soundtrack. You know the chainsaw song. Yeah, I yeah. get on my jack, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, all right, uh, Matt. Did did you happen to score on a sponsor for this show? Being that you're our special guest, did you have to get a sponsor for the show? <laughs> yeah, strange enough, I did. Nice. So I, wor- I work in I work in downtown Seattle, and I end up running into this guy, and somehow he knew I was going to be on a podcast. I don't know what's going on with that. So he got, I got a sponsor. The dude handed me up like a wrinkled up twenty dollar bill. I mean it's it's something, and he gave me some swag too. Nice. Um, so it's Crazy Joe's COVID away spray. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looked like an old school hobo, like he's been riding trains. I mean I don't even know if people do that anymore, but. But he so he gave me this bottle. So basically, the spray is supposed to keep the COVID off. But upon further inspection, it seems like he just wrapped his label around some Pam bottles. <laughs> um, but you know, sponsor's a sponsor, I guess. <laughs> and uh, his slogan he started to say, uh, he said the results are so crazy, and then he just kind of like passed out. <laughs> It sounds legit to me, man, because I don't think the virus can stick to you if you're covered in some kind of a uh, lubricating ointment. I, yeah. I mean, that's why I went along with it anyways. I mean, but yeah. I mean, it's worth a try. Yeah, you, it's it's hard to resist anytime somebody just wads up something and hands it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it at the Hail Ming store, and just remember, we do not uh, verify the uh, validity of anything that we sell whatsoever. Right. That's right. <laughs> All right, I, I've got a new one as well, um, and kind of the same deal that you guys had where I've got some, some text here that they gave me to kind of read off, and it says, nobody likes when old, worn-out bed sheets get stained and smelly, and storing them has always been a nuisance. So, are you tired of sheet stains in your drawers? Well, no more, because Rem, Remco's got new drawer liners. Protect your drawers from those terrible, messy, messy stained sheets <laughs> <laughs> that your loved ones will appreciate. That's right. Ramco's drawer liners. No more sheet stains. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we could all use those. <laughs> I, I feel like Kazan over here going, <clears throat> with my hand on my ear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. All right. That means we need to limp our way into the time machine. Before we go, I just want to throw out there for anyone listening, we might mention the other two Cube movies. And if you haven't seen those, uh, it might not be more than just kind of an, uh, a personal belief on them. But I want to give a spoiler alert that we don't want to ruin anything. So by all means, if, if you plan on seeing the other two, there are some spoilers, especially with the third one. And I would hate to ruin that for anybody. But don't don't worry about the spoilers if we're going to tell you everything about this movie. Yeah, we <laughs> Just worry about the other two that we might mention. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 97. I mean, I think this is kind of the movie that even if you tell them everything, it'll still be interesting to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. True. Yeah. All right, Matthew, jump in here with us, man. We're about to take off in the time machine. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, man. You can have a seat over there, man, yeah, over on that side. All right. Yeah. Three seats. Out. Out. Seatbelt. Oh! I never get used to the well, G-force. See, they don't ride that bad. <sighs> okay. Whoa. All right. That wasn't the worst. Hey, look. 1997, which the ride wasn't the worst, but 1997 kind of was. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, we're back in 1997. We still work together. <laughs> yeah, let's go back. <laughs> it's weird. It's yeah, so man, long ago. <laughs> yeah, this is the year I think that we got uh, employee of the month together. <laughs> yeah, employees of the month. <laughs> no, just employee of the month. Yeah, we they, shared it. They just lumped us together. It was it was one month too. Like we didn't even get two months in a row. <laughs> back when you were Siamese twins. Yeah. <laughs> we we celebrated by yelling at people in the break room. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> As you do. The good thing is, even when we weren't Employee of the Month, we still yelled at people in the break room. Yeah, we really didn't do anything to to get the award. I think they were just out of choices, and it's like, we got to give it to somebody. How about those two morons? We were really loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of loud, we need to to uh, have a sponsor. A sponsor. A sponsor. The synopsis. <laughs> we need to have a synopsis for this show. Sam already wanting to go back. Um <laughs> <laughs> We have a time machine. Yep. I, I got to uh, find somebody for our synopsis this week, and it's the one and only Tommy Chong. Take it away, Tommy. Hey, it's Tommy, man. And I'm here to tell you about Cube. <laughs> Cube is a fantasy docudrama, man, about the groovy life of a very mellow rapper, Ice Cube. I, I love the part, man, where he's driving his car through a pack of Velociraptors to save the princess, man. And she don't even thank him for it, bro. He should have just, like, kicked her out of the car, man. But it all ends well when Ice Cube meets Ice T and they have a refreshing drink together, man. And a bologna sandwich, yeah. Starring some dude named... Jason Momoa as Ice Cube, and John C. Riley as Ice T, and Grace Jones as the Princess. Man, it's a real hit. Speaking of hit, man, I'm going to take one right now. Later on, man. Thank you, Tommy. I don't think we've had Tommy Chong on since like The Punisher or something. I think it was the car. I think I watched the wrong movie then. <laughs> <laughs> The, the car was Bill Cosby. Remember that? Oh, it was. Because <laughs> he says, it's a car from the wheels to the roofie. <laughs> My roofie. lawyers are saying I can't say roofie. And that was... Uh, uh, Johnny Krug. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I don't remember. We have had a Tommy Chong one before, I think. But I don't remember. It was what. somewhere around in there. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. We have a limited number of... Of celebrities on tap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that Ringo showed up a lot more than Tommy Chong has. <laughs> well, you know, he's still alive. Oh, so is he's Tommy Chong. Alive. He's t- so is Tommy Chong and you know Paul McCartney, but still. Uh, all right, man. Let's get into this. Danny, give me your so-called number one reason to watch Cube. Okay, you know I don't go. Um, my number one reason to watch Cube is Alderson, I hardly knew you. I mean, we have an intro scene for the cube. You got a guy waking up. You don't know what's going on. He walks into a room, and much to the sake of the title of the movie, he gets cubed like a bunch of ham. Yeah, he does. You know, it's it's your first introduction to the danger of the cube and, and, the, and the mysterious nature of it. And the guy's name is Alderson. So, you know, I just I, I threw that out there. Alderson, I hardly knew you. But he did a good job of like explaining to you what you're in for in the next hour and a half of movie. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a perfect setup because it's that it's a thing where you still have no idea of what's happening, even though you just saw something grotesque. And I have to admit, for '97, these effects, and I've even got it as one of my reasons, is that I think the effects still hold up pretty dang well, man. I think they didn't do what a lot of films in '97 did was like stick with just the cg the cg right the cg is okay right it's not bad which is surprising but they also did the they actually mixed in the practical still which that was yeah, the mistake yeah. of the 90s is they were like oh cg is awesome let's just do everything with it yeah which, which was the a- which was the mistake they made in hypercube right i mean yeah. hypercube I mean, one of the many mistakes they made in hypercube but yeah absolutely the- all right matt you'll go next uh yeah, so mine aren't quite in order. I just they're kind of erratic. Um, Same. I'm just gonna start with I'm gonna say set design for this one because really the whole movie takes place in the qu- cube, which yeah. for the most part of the movie yeah. you don't know what that means even. But it's just the 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 set pieces is like what they do with that. It's just like. It could be the same rooms you're looking at, you know, you don't even know, but they're like so it's just like there's different mm-hmm. colors, there's different patterns, there's all this stuff. 
And it just seems very oppressive and like claustrophobic. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Plus, you know, it has that whole minimalist thing where when they're making the movie, they can just reuse the same sets and change the colors behind it. And it doesn't change anything because it's supposed to be just, just like you said, oppressive and infinite. You know, yep. it never changes. And that's part of what makes it so frustrating. I think that uh, when this came out, of course, where Danny and I worked, they were a distribution company. They kind of handled all these videotapes and all these magazines. And this was one of the movies that we actually carried. And uh, I think it was in maybe Rue Morgue magazine that I was reading, and they were doing a review of this movie. And they were talking about how impressive this movie was for as low budget as it was. And the set was basically two rooms that they used over and over, and they just changed the lighting in it. So you're basically just seeing one set piece that they used for the entire movie and made all this happen in. And, yeah, I mean, that's it's it's really impressive that they got that much mileage out of different camera angles and stuff to make you feel like you're in this infinite set of boxes that's rotating and all that. So, yeah, I, that was a selling point that I remember... Uh, talking to Danny about it at work and that's what led us to checking it out because it got such good reviews and we were blown away after we went and got a monster from Hardee's <laughs> <laughs> Monster Burger yeah you want a monster go ahead Rick what's no, your next reason no, no, I was just going to say me I, I kind of go with my number one is the, the red herring wren man I, I think uh, here's a dude <laughs> that's just walking through the set it's almost like Bob Hope when he's playing golf and uh, spies like us, and he's just playing through in, in the middle of a scene, this yeah. dude just comes busting through and is like, pardon me, excuse me, taking his shoes, throwing them in the next room, just crawling into the next one. I just love how, you know, matter of fact, he's just moving. And they kind of hang on to his shirt tails for a while because he's this guy that has broken out of several different penitentiaries, apparently. And which may be one of the reasons he's even in this thing to begin with. I'm sure we'll elaborate on some of that as we go along, but I just love the fact of you're led to believe this guy, if anybody can break out, it's this guy and uh, doesn't end well for him. <laughs> yeah, like he's kind of the first um, red herring, like you're saying, where like, oh, you're like, things are turning up because this guy knows what he's doing. He's actually my favorite part of the movie, really. He's like, actually my favorite character, Me too. too. Me too. And and he's the he's yep. and he's the dude from the I don't know if you ever watched the Red Green show. Oh yeah, he's one of the main guys in the that's always on the show. So I I didn't actually think about that huh. till this time. Wow. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I never even put that together. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, he's my favorite guy in this movie, and he, like he seems he, he's got everything figured out. And I remember when the little the little bit happens, I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Danny, that's you. Man, I mean, there's so much to talk about this movie in general. Uh, I, I I normally like to, to whittle it down to the things that you can't miss, but it, it would be a I, I would feel bad if I didn't just point out that if you're watching this movie and you're not thinking about how these people are not just trapped in the cube, but it's kind of more of a grand statement about you know society and where people yep. are. You know, they keep saying. Uh, you know, there's got to be a reason we're in here, or if there's a reason, there's a way we can get out. Or and and then they say, well, we'll just put one foot in front of the other one because we we got to figure out, you know, the the way to get out, and then we'll figure out why we're here. You just just take those questions back and think about see, if they were the, in real life. You know, it, it, because you see, the the butt is like society. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just trying to get a foot up in there. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. So, so the last thing to go back to your last reason, the last thing that Ren says is save yourselves from yourselves. Yeah. And then, yep. and then he trips a trap and he's dead. So, you yep. know, it, it, he says it because he realizes and, if you get caught up in trying to figure out too much, you'll never get anything done. Right. And especially with a group of people all trying to argue about what the reason is, you're never going to be able to proceed because you're going to get too caught up trying to figure out why you're there and not how to get away. And not to mention, 20 seconds before he says that thoughtful 
remark. He says the most memorable thing in the movie, which is, suck on it. (laughs) (laughs) Keeps the saliva flowing. (laughs) All right, Matt, that's you, man. So this kind of goes along with that a bit. Um, Just the cast of characters in this movie. um, Yeah. It's a small environment, and there's not a lot of different scenery, but the way they do it, you know, they have a they have a doctor, which you you find these out. You don't find them out immediately because they don't give away who they are until they goes along. But you have a doctor, right. a student, a cop, an escape artist, and then eventually, a guy who seems to be autistic. And just the way they play off of each other, and then like they're all trying to figure out why each of them is possibly there to figure out like what's going on. That's a right. huge element yeah. of this movie that I thought was cool. Yeah. yeah. And like strange enough, so. I don't know. It seems like this, like maybe the later Saw movies might have ripped this movie off a bit. Because if you've ever watched those, it's like they have all those people and like, why are we in here? And yep. they all have different personalities. It just seemed like almost blatantly ripped off. Now that I watched this this time, yeah, yeah. This is and this is an age old story, right? I mean, this is when you look at the the scenario and what you're setting up, the the, the chaos that's going on is kind of irrelevant because it's all about people dealing with people. So night of the living dead, the crazies, all these movies are the same thing. It's just the, 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 the element that they're dealing with is different. So yeah, it's, it's easy to see where this movie could be pulled, you know, some ideas taken from freely because I think it's what made this movie stand out. It was such a an original twist on an age old story. Yeah, you jumped right into my second page of notes where I said this has very <laughs> little. This has very little to do with the cube. Just like Night of the Living Dead has very little to do with zombies. Right. It has everything to yep. do with the people trapped in the house. It has very little to do with what's going on outside the house. You know, they're all trying to figure out why they're there. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because they end up becoming their own worst enemies. Yeah. Yep. So, I guess that brings up mine, which is, to me, this is the, uh, the well, you know, Danny spends quite a few, quite a bit of time and money in situations like this. So, I'm saying that this is basically the whole idea and concept of a big money maker now, which is the escape rooms, right? Where you go out and you're put in a room with a group of people and you're trying to figure out the mystery of how to get out of the room or whatever. This is uh, a sci-fi, you know, precursor to a lot of that, I think. And I'm sure those have been around for a while. But immediately when I watched this again, it opened my eyes to that's the thrill of going and doing one of these escape rooms, you know, is is you're trying to put these pieces together and... If you come up with the wrong equation, then yeah, that's that's where the, the bad things happen. And I don't know, it's pretty interesting that that came to mind when I was watching this again. Yeah, testing your the, the ability to test yourself and see how you turn out, kind of thing. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I remember playing games like this when I was younger as a kid, though, making up challenges to do. So that's kind of the same. But the movie, so the movie really relates to a lot of people because of that. Well, I I didn't do that. I just uh, laid down three or four kids and tried to jump over on my bi- on my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> and I how, bet I can clear four this time. <laughs> and how is that really unlike the cube? I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny. Well, you know what? So I'm just looking at what. Dude, I'm, you got two pages of notes. Just pick one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that, that my next reason is Quentin, the cop, and his, his statements about people. You know, he, wow. he, he frequently says, I, I know how to read people. I can read people. I know what to do with people. I know how to move yeah. people and motivate people. Right? He is yeah. the worst one there because yeah. instead of focusing on what he can do, he feels like what he can do is tell other people what to do. Right? Exactly. And. That that's uh, so that's why I wrote this down because you you need a, you need an antagonist obviously and the antagonist primarily is the cube the the, the antagonist yeah. is trying to kill them the antagonist is imprisoning them but you can't reason with the cube and one of the things I love about the movie is they give no explanation whatsoever throughout the movie all the way to the end as to what the cube yeah. is so they have to give you a real antagonist and that's Quentin and Quentin's yep. problem is that he thinks he's got it all figured out realizing deep down he doesn't have any of it figured out 
Yeah, he puts off yeah. that big game. Well, yeah, yeah, you you pretty much nailed it because he goes on and on about how he's a leader and how he knows to read people and stuff, and he's just looking at his own benefit. He none of these people mean anything to him, and uh, apparently that shows at the end, right? But uh, right. Yeah, you you absolutely end up hating this guy. My note just says, surprise, surprise, the cop is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, a little too yeah. close to home. Too soon? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Not a time. Matt. Matt, that's you, man. All right. Uh, yeah, my notes, like, we keep covering all this stuff. Um, oh, one of my favorite things is the uh, high-tech trap sensing technology, a.k.a. throwing yeah. shoes. <laughs> true I just thought it was cool how in this movie you know they're thrown in there and all they have is what's on them and yeah. so it's kind of like uh, you know like it's not in a wilderness but it's kind of a similar thing so what can you use to survive and in this case they use their shoes to find the traps because they find out that a lot of them are motion sensing yeah and, and just tossing them in the rooms seeing what happens and, and proceeding on, which, you know, works for a while, like we said, and, and uh, then then things start getting getting a little crazy, and apparently you run out of shoes. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and that's my thing. It's like, well, if they would have thought this through, I mean, it'd been a little grotesque, but they could have took Ren and just start throwing him in the rooms. <laughs> you know? He'd get nasty after about six or five uh, six or five, six or seven. Uh, <laughs> told you I want to go back. Uh, <laughs> after about six or seven tosses into another room and like flamethrowers and stuff come out, you know, you probably get to where you don't want to handle him anymore. But Look, if they find know. that room that Alderson was in, they could just pick up a bunch of cubes and just chuck one in each one, right? Just little ham cubes, <laughs> yeah, little Alderson cubes. <laughs> you just everybody put them in your pockets. You know, I th- I've got his face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now you were on brain detail. <laughs> brain detail. <laughs> uh, mine kind of goes along with this as well, man. I, I think even though, like we said earlier with the CGI stuff, these booby traps still work, man. I, I think they still hold up well. I don't. I don't think that the the effects hurt it enough to where you go, okay, I don't buy that. I think the fact that you're dealing with, in most cases piano wire or something like that being what these booby traps are made out of it works and uh you get a nice variety of stuff here too man and and (laughs) from from barbaric being cut up by wires to getting acid sprayed in your face it's uh it's got some pretty creative stuff in it man yeah definitely somebody was sadistic when they designed the cube yeah which which is the ultimate question, right? Because there's things to me that stood out, again, watching this, because I know before it's like nobody knows if it's man-made or if it's from another planet. People are just waking up and they're in this thing. But I did notice that the handles on the doors, if you look, there is a, a little obviously a, a, yeah, a bolt from Earth that we use. So it yeah. kind of hints to this is this is actually human-made here. So. Yeah, and to to Matt's point earlier, it looks very real. You know, it looks like something yes. that you know the walls look real, the the frame looks real, all the metal doors they they look technologically superior, like they were crafted well. But they don't look alien. They don't look foreign. They look like something that you could build yourself. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right, Danny. All right, so I'm you know so about forty minutes in for you people out there, so. I always like to hit the high points of the movie. It's hard to do, and we circled back on the same premises, as as Matthew mentioned earlier, because it is just, what, six people? One, two, three, four, five, six people in the cube over and over again. So you're going to follow yep. the same things over and over again. But that's what makes it such a good parable, right? I mean, there's a point at about 40 minutes in where uh, they, they, they figure out that that one of the people in there whose name um not i don't think it's ironically is worth right because they're constantly asking, well, what are you here for worth what's your you know what, what's your element of the group um yeah so so worth 
was part of a group that helped to design the outer casing of the cube. So they know about how big it is. And that, that sparks all kinds of, like, as soon as they know anything about it, you know, um, there, there's a whole uh, Pentagon, multinational corporation, the police, uh, no, yeah. nobody's in, in, in the hallway, the, the doctor, she says, nobody's ever going to call me paranoid again. And she looks over and everybody's just looking at her like she's batshit crazy. <laughs> but, pardon my language. I, um, <laughs> but but it, it's at that point that, that Worth says, no, you don't get it. There's nobody up there. This, this thing is just derelict. If they did build it for a reason, the reason's long gone. And and I gotta say again, it's it's a it, it's an existential question at this point. They they found out one thing about the world that they're in, and they feel like they can make all these assumptions. And the one person yeah. who knows anything about it says, "No, there's nothing up there." If yeah. if it's not a God statement, I don't know what it is. And yeah, you can enjoy it as a movie on any level you want. But the reason that I personally enjoy it is because it is very much a statement about these these really, really, really dangerous questions that people can ask themselves and decide to answer for themselves. I And that part, that part too, I kind of thought actually showed what the cop was good for, per se, because he plays some kung fu, like, verbal judo on him, and that's how he gets that out of him, that he used to work for it. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't remember what he says, but he says something along the lines of, blah, he says something, and then the guy goes, yeah, there's, but there's no way out, or whatever he says. I can't remember what he says, and he's like, oh, how do you know that? Yeah, it's yeah. true. He, you know, at that point, Quentin manages to like trick Worth into saying something, and and you know, then he's like, "Now you need to tell us what you know." And, and it's kind of the jig is up, you know. Yeah, right. absolutely. And like I said, for all you listening out there, if you just want to jump to this point, which I don't, I do not recommend. It's at forty minutes or so that there's this whole like esoteric discussion about is there anybody out there? Is there any reason for this? But the point is, this is after the montage, right? The montage yeah. of going through cubes, which is simultaneously frustrating and awesome. Yeah. And that music's creepy. The ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah. yeah. Man, I almost took some sound bites, but I didn't know what to take. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess we haven't really brought up... Like, I think, maybe we have, but I, my other point is just how much this movie f makes you feel like you are in the cube personally while you're as a viewer. Mm. Just because the people don't know what's going on, and neither do you. As a lot of movies, they give you that, like, viewer, like, outside knowledge, like, ah, I can I know what's going to go on. I can, get ups I can get worked up about it. But this one doesn't bother to do that. It's like, you know as little as they do. So it kind of feels yeah. like you're another party member that is there along the way. Awesome. Yeah. It does the opposite of what, you know, uh, Hitchcock always talked about, you know, showing the bomb, right? Right. It's, it's, so it's, it's kind of the same thing here where you know, like, like Matt said, you, you're in the dark just like they are, and you discover when they discover. That makes it effective, man. It really does. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's very claustrophobic. And, and their use of camera work where, like, the camera swings and the camera rocks and it twists and it, 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 it turns – because, you know, they're always in the cube, so the background's always the same. So they do all this stuff just to add energy to the scenes with the camera work, which is also a 90s thing. They did a lot of the, yep. you know, pre-360 cam stuff where they just kind of, like, rocked the camera around and did a lot of, like, like film cranking to make things go faster. They were just trying really – I love the 90s movies for this. They were really experimenting with cameras to do what they do with digital effects now. Well – Every bit of that that you just mentioned is all in Battlefield Earth, and it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so it sounds good, and I appreciate you saying it, but Look, I don't know if I totally buy it. <laughs> here's the thing. If you add John Travolta to the cube, it would still suck. <laughs> oh, probably. Unless, he was, unless he was that first guy that got cubed. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I blame John Travolta, uh, though. I really do. His early stuff is great, yeah. I don't have no problem with it. Uh, yeah, that's your problem. All right. <laughs> My next one is worth showing his worth. Yes. Um, you know, here's the guy that's, leave me alone. I just want to die. There's no way out. You're wasting your time. To, I'm going to get rid of this cop who's 
killing people and all these other things that's going on, uh, he takes it upon himself to <laughs> slam Quentin into in a door, man. <laughs> And just hold him there while the other ones are trying to get away. And I'm like, all right, he's he's doing the sacrifice, right? Yeah. You guys go on. I've got him. And he finally gets the door shut and uh, breaks away. And not to spoil too much at the end of it, but, uh, you know, he kind of saves the day. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Worth has always been, you know, he was he was a nihilist. He didn't believe there was any way out of this thing because he knew a little bit about it. He knew how big it was. Um, but when it came down to it, of course, you also got to say this is after, you know, a, a lot of Quinn's done a lot of really bad stuff, including taking a boot and, and beating the crap out of him with it. Oh God. Yeah. You know, and, and after which, you know, Quentin says, you don't want the boot because they, they told him to give him the boot because they were going to leave him. And, you know, he didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the immortal words of Ice-T. I was a cop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right man what you got who you me okay i'm gonna see the sound room there's a room that's sound activated and the trap that's yeah. in this is is impossible to avoid it it shoots needles out of all four walls and and skewers anything in the room but it's sound activated so they've got to climb down out of a ceiling door into a side door with this without making a sound and this whole time they've got um they they've got uh Kazan who's autistic and you know he he makes noises you know and they 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 have to make sure he doesn't make a noise while this is all going on so it's extremely tense and yeah. and you know without knowing you know you know what's going to happen you know what will happen if the room has a sound in it but really, that's all you've got going for you, you know, and they're all getting through. And I, also at this point, I think we're all kind of hoping that, you know, Quentin's stuck in the room when it all goes off. I know I was. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Uh, and that's that's probably the only thing where the special effects, you kind of go, eh. Yeah, that's showing its age, but it still works. I yeah. I mean, how else you going to make needles come out of the wall, right? True. So. All right, Matt. I guess it goes back to what we were just talking about. I guess just the just Quentin being such such a psycho was a huge yeah was a huge point in this movie. Um, I, you know, like when he starts to really you see it early on. They're talking about like character things and how you, what you see in people. And I'm like early on, I'm like this guy is not very stable. Yeah, and I felt really leery about the uh, the doctor lady. I can't remember. I didn't put down their names. I forgot it. But Hot she's kind of she's kind of like yeah. She's early on poking at it. And I'm like, you should not be doing this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like she has no tact. Holloway yeah, needles he, him a little bit too much. Yeah, and she the the line that I think was the final one was when she said, uh, "Do you beat your kids as well?" Yeah, but it, I, know, I, I think the final line is when she went. She went ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the 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 point where he really loses it and he starts. I thought this movie was gonna have like a rape scene for a minute there. Yeah, he, yeah, you didn't know what kind of where it was gonna go. He pops out saying, "I figured it all out, man," and blah blah blah. And then he goes, "I am the key master," and then and and something about the gatekeeper. And I'm like, "What's gonna happen now, dude?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's talking to yeah. this to this student. You know, I, I guess I'm assuming she's in college, but she still lives at home. You know, Levin. Who who also is some kind of a math genius? Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why she's a math genius, but she has. And he's all like, "Yeah, I have the key, and you have the lock, and man and woman." And yeah, the, at this point, he's completely bonkers. <laughs> it was not, and it was cra- it was done so well. It wasn't. I didn't feel like it was too over the top. I feel like they could have gone too far with that, but it just it felt like like they went just far enough with it. Sure. I agree. Yeah. I think they did a lot with what they had to work with, and still, like, you can believe anybody would go completely crazy in this in this scenario. I mean, nobody's yeah. going to come out of this going, well, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm zen in the corner. You know, they're, you're dying, and you have no way out, and no one's giving you any instructions on how to get out, and you're basically in prison for whatever reason you're in prison. Kind of like, oh boy. 
Exactly. Yeah, and that the thing about this too is just the timeline because it's not days upon days here. This is just a series of hours that all this is happening. So it's you know you've only got so long you can live otherwise, and I think that adds to it as well. Of it's not three weeks later, you know, anything like that. This is this is ongoing, and and a lot of decisions, a lot of bad stuff happened in such a short period of time. All right, my next one is exactly what we were just talking about: the death of Holloway, which uh, they decide to tie their clothes together and hang her out a window <laughs> to to see what else they can see, and uh, things get a little hairy. And I, I didn't understand this. I'm like, why would they all be holding her? You know, letting her down when they could have just maybe tied the clothes to the 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 door handle that's on the ground but that's just me um but uh you know things go wrong she slips and then quentin leans out and puts his hand out to grab her to pull her back up and he's got her and you're thinking all right he's gonna do the right thing and then he does do the right thing he lets her go oh, <laughs> oh. yeah i mean you know i'm i'm not the hugest holloway fan but i mean they're at this point they all should be looking out for each other and and, yeah. and Quentin obviously saw her. Anybody who was going to possibly give him a run for his money as leader of the pack, he was going to take his opportunity to get rid of them. I mean, he saw himself as some kind of a savior, and, and it was the farthest thing from the truth. Right. Yeah, she had to go, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his his he was totally a practical person. Like, his thoughts were like, who here has a use to get me out of this? And he didn't right. see a use for her, so. <laughs> yeah, Voted that's, off the that's island. That's a good point. Well, but yep. you know, at the same time, she volunteered to go because she was the lightest next to Levin. And, you know. Yeah. The thing is, if Levin had gone, he wouldn't have dropped her because, you know, to, right. to Matt's point, he, he definitely wanted to do something Neither. to her. It's I mean, obvious. Well, and he, and he needed her too much too because she was the only one that was getting them as far as they were. When you really look back at it, yeah, she was the one coming up with the equations that halfway made sense that none of the rest of them even had an idea. So uh, she was kind of crucial to the team. Yeah, and maybe Worth could because he was an engineer, but at the same time, you know, Quentin yeah, he didn't care. Quentin already <laughs> didn't want you know Worth around because not right. only did he not like his attitude, but also he saw him as a threat. Early on, yep. he saw other men as a threat. Yep. Just like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of threat, Danny, it's your turn. All right, my next reason is dude's pants. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to say that, that, you know, they finally figure out a way. I mean, so, so just to synopsize, the cube is this great big thing. All the rooms have serial numbers. They figured out that one room moves around and it becomes a bridge at some point. They're trying to figure out how to get it to that position and get to that room at that time. I don't know how they work it. You know, through mathematical magic, they managed to do it. Um, but at the point where they have managed to make the bridge... You know, Levin's going to leave, and she looks back at Worth, and Worth has given up. He's like, you know what? I don't want to leave. And yep. uh, and she says, you know, why aren't you coming? She says, you know, I don't want to go out there. And she says, what's out there? He says, boundless human stupidity. <laughs> right? And, you know, I just that's a reason to watch the movie. It's, again, like, he'd rather stay, and, and maybe he wouldn't rather stay. Maybe he knew he was dying anyway. But the whole right. thing is through this whole, those whole struggle was kind of just to see that there was an exit, maybe not necessarily to take it. Yeah, or you know, uh, you just kind of say, you know, this is this is good enough. You know, um, I've seen what my own, you know, abilities have caused harm and pain to other people. I mean, he's. He had nothing to actually do with this thing, but he's still a part of it. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, he's. One, it seems like one of the guys that just doesn't like life in general anyways. So, you know, how soon is now, right? And he knew at some point they were putting people in it. Yeah. He tells Holloway, she, she's figured out that, that he knows that people are being put in there somehow. 
and she asks him about how long has he known, and he's like a couple of months. And you can tell he's he felt impotent at that point to do anything about right. it. He's like, I helped create this thing. I know people are being put in it, and now I'm in it. So maybe it's poetic justice. Right. Yep. That's that's kind of what I got out of it is I'm I'm supposed to die here, you know, for my own, for my own doings. So. All right, cool. Matt? Yeah, so I guess uh, I, I like, I mean, we might have tackled it a little bit, but I like how, like, throughout the movie, you feel like these small victories where, yeah. like, okay, they figured out that shoes work, okay? But no, wait, that doesn't work. And then they figure out that there's these numbers and prime numbers, and if they work this out, e- the even ones are are safe, and the odds are um, death rooms. But then there's colors too. Does that mean something? Because the the autistic guy Kazan, he's like, he's going on about different colored rooms, and does that mean something? Right. And then they get to the part, and then they're like, no, wait, these are coordinates inside, uh, geospatial coordinates inside of a cube. So like they keep figuring it out, but not figuring it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes it brilliant, man. I mean, because you still don't know if it's actually the reason why it 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 works to a certain degree and we don't know what happens really afterwards well i mean we kind of do because you know there's other movies but um yeah i mean uh, that's again what's so brilliant about this because now nowadays we have to be spoon-fed every bit of information and over explain stuff which drives me crazy and we end up ruining a lot of stories that could be so much better if we just left some of it to your own thought process i agree and, and that's why i've always loved the cube is because it doesn't give an explanation and although yep. so so like i said earlier hypercube is terrible cube zero gives some explanations but i don't think we yep. need to even talk about that if you want explanations they do a good job it's a fun movie and it has a great plot but you could also just watch cube and be totally happy kind of coming up with your own answers because yeah, and don't, that's the best don't thing about Cube, it. Don't forget Cube for the Annihilation, where <laughs> Olivia Newton John fights Michelle Pfeiffer in the in the in the red room. John Travolta in it. <laughs> the Return of Cubert. <laughs> oh, there oh. you go. Is John Travolta uh, in it? He could be. And I'm out. Um, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> uh, I I did put in my notes. I like this. This has this is a sci-fi version of Reservoir Dogs to a certain degree because mm. you, you get that pairing off that kind of happens uh none of it's going to end well but your groups that you you know that they, they've kind of separated and they're holding on to their own and they're trying to make it work out but you know the outcome is just not going to be good i don't know i just saw a little a lot of similarities here of of the way these get, people get grouped together and how they try to help each other to a certain extent even though the outcome's still going to be bad well said. I don't know what I said, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, again, at the end of the end of the end, uh, you know, you, you still have your protagonist who, who's uh, let's ha- let's hats off to Quentin. He was the guy you love to hate. And he also helped to push the plot along because without Quentin, you didn't have an enemy to rally against. Right. So. You know, yep. hats off to him for being a great bad guy, and also screw that guy for being a great bad guy. Because you know, <laughs> Levin's about to get out. You really want to see her get out. She's cute. You know, she she seems to have a lot to live for. And boom, she gets skewered by one of those damn handles. You know, it's just yeah. He's a yeah. great bad guy because man, he just screws the pooch on that one. He's kind of like Otis from the the Henry movie, right? Yeah. You know, it's like that thing when when we finally met Tom Towles. It's like I don't know if I want to go up and talk to him or if i want to just punch him you know <laughs> you just you hate that guy so much you know and and i feel like that uh, quentin is definitely living up to that that personnel man all right all right i'm out so i don't have anything else what do you guys got sorry i got i got i think i got like one more because i don't think we uh i mean just kazan in general we've brought him up a little bit yeah yeah but as a character he's my number two in the movie after uh the poor demise of Ren um, but Kazan is just a great character and the yeah. actor pulling it off it just it, it doesn't seem it, it could come off as insulting or um, just bad taste but the actor doing it just pulls it off so well 
and you never you don't know you don't know what's wrong with him per se like you don't know if he's autistic you don't know if he's had some sort of procedure or you know whatever it is it is but you know there's something below that like he's spouting things that could mean something if they could just take the time to listen to him but for the most part nobody really does yeah true i I agree i mean i I, it's funny that with as much as i have notes to talk about you know as, as far as it goes i really just want people to watch the movie and make their own decisions about the plot but you make a great point that we haven't talked that much about kazan kazan um but he's he's an important character and you know the the part of the importance of him is the fact that they don't know how to use what he's got yeah and as far as the acting goes i mean you know this guy does a fantastic job but i think we knew that he was going to be great being that he was the same guy that played rawhead rex <laughs> was he hell me <laughs> oh, you got me i was like wait how tall is this guy I'm like he didn't. Oh, he didn't man. run right for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really wanted to know what else he was in. That, that's why you got me. Good job. <laughs> Good job. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your guys' favorite traps? I guess just a quote in the end. Ooh, it's a good question. Um. I kind of like the hourglass one, right? Where the the strands were up straight, and he they, they close in on him. Then they do the twist, and he barely gets out, and it just catches his leg. Yeah, I like the fact that it played Chubby Checker while it did that too. Let's go, <laughs> on, baby. Let's do the. <laughs> um, man, I mean, like you know, most of them are just like a nozzle shoots out, and you see like somebody burning up with acid or whatever. And and again, I love that because uh, to your point, that means it never really is dated. They don't show you enough for you to start picking it apart. Um, yeah. Wasn't there one with like a butane with like a butane flame, like a like a blue flame That's, that set something off? Yeah, I think there was one room right where it, it was like flamethrowers or something. Yeah, they didn't go in that one. They peeked in it and it no. set it off and it went off right by the door. Yeah, yeah I mean, as, as cool as the cube thing is, I, I kind of like the flamethrowers. It was it's just kind of kind of simple, you know. Yeah. Like an old episode of G.I. Joe. Nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about yours? What was your favorite? I think well, the cube thing's awesome, but I like how much the uh, the acid thing caught me off guard. Mm. Yeah. It, it, and, and, it, and I hate it at the same time I love it, because, again, that's my favorite character. And, I, and I, 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 when I watched this the first time, I literally sat there and was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, and you know, those are avoidable traps. Though that was like head level because it shot him right in the face. So if he had just been like, "Oh no," and ducked, then maybe it wouldn't have killed him. Those are some gnarly effects too, man. Because I mean, you're seeing his face really just disintegrate yeah. while they're looking at him, and it just hollows it out. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a good effect. And I thought, like, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they're done with showing it now. And then they they flash back, <laughs> and he's got like a cavity where his face should be. <laughs> and then right. they come back to that room to show you again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anybody got anything else? That's it. All right. You know that brings us up to the sound bite I do have. Rating time. It's rating time. time. So, uh, Danny, what do you give this movie? Man, so I've got to give this movie. Hmm. I'm going to give it 15 locks. But only five keys. <laughs> All right. I don't know what that means, but go ahead, Matt. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know what that means, but I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I go for. <laughs> I give it 50 trap testing shoes. Mm. Ah, yes. I give it 74 suck on it. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably one of the best lines of like a lot of things. <laughs> Because <laughs> it, it isn't really aggressive either. He he like pulls the button off and then he's like, "Yeah, suck on it," you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like why wouldn't you at that point? It's like directions and an insult at the same time. Yeah, he looks like he'd be Large Marge's brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like definitely oh. in America they have that dude who's in Beetlejuice who's like mopping the hall in the afterlife. Like, oh, yeah. it's 
death for the damned. Like that guy is like the American. Oh, yeah. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him small wren sent you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And as always, Brian Blessed, what do you think of Cuba? Let the combat begin. To the death. Uh, to the I death. I think he got the point. I think he got yeah. the point. All right, cool. Folks, we'll be back right after this. From the makers of the sci-fi phenomenon, Cube, comes a new vision of imprisoned terror. It just keeps going in both directions forever. Trapped with no directions and danger abound. Don't let anyone fool you. That light, it ain't never at the end of the tunnel, doll. Endless, pointless, merciless. Ah! You'll never escape the tube. So, with all these people, with everybody being quarantined during this pandemic, I was able to contact Arnold, who had started a new um, online school. So he's teaching people to be able to have quippy comebacks for their Zoom meetings. Uh, I won't explain it anymore. I'll let Arnold take over um, explaining his new venture. Hey, Arnold. Arnold, it's you. Do you ever find yourself struggling to find a comeback? Or maybe you feel like you need something punchy to say uh, as you end a Zoom conference call. Or maybe you just need to go tell Bill and accounting to go to hell. Well, look no further than Uncle Arnie's online school for one-liners. Before long, you'll be... You'll be the rage of every live stream or online meetings. Your enemies, I mean, uh, aka your co-workers, will be, will be groveling at your feet. You'll learn zingers like, It's terrible time. If it bleeds, we can kill it. I swear I'll not kill anyone. Welcome to the Ice Age. Hasta la vista, baby. Or get to the job. And don't forget the classic... Remember, I can break your neck like a chicken's. Join today and receive a bonus, a thigh master, and a genuine gazelle glider, so you can get pumped up for your work from home. I gotta go. Get to the chopper so I can solve the riddle of steel. Hasta la vista, baby. Aw, oh, dang it, man. Hey, Jules. What's the matter, man? You seem a little down. Well, I am down. I'm so thirsty I can't even think straight. Did you say thirsty? Yep. Well, have I got something for you. Great, what you got? Is it like some kind of soda? No, it's no soda. What you got, a stick of gum? <laughs> Not even close. Then what is it, Dan? It's... It's buttons. What? Saliva buttons. Saliva buttons? You put one in your mouth whenever you're hungry or thirsty. And it keeps the saliva flowing. Are you a moron? And they have been approved by the FDA as the safest buttons that you can put in your mouth. Hey, guy, you're really pissing me off. So whenever you get that feeling, just put a button in your mouth and suck on it. What did you just say to me? That's it. Francis, club this clown. You got it, Jules. And they're really... Oh, 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 oh. Suck on that, you jackass. Unbelievable. Let's get out of here, Francis. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. And hey, if you enjoy this movie, let us know. Hey, I tell you what, if you don't enjoy this movie, don't let us know. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we uh, like it. So suck on now. it. <laughs> Haters going to hate. <laughs> Haters going to hate. Yeah, man. So this has been a blast. It's a great movie, guys. I mean, it's it's super low budget, but it's the kind of low budget where it doesn't suffer from being low budget. Um, yeah, I think you can see that we all agree that this is something you need to check out. Uh, the sequels can kind of come go. If you find this one really interesting enough, then take your chances on the others. But uh, this one's this one's solid, man. Yeah. It's as good as Grease Three. Here we are, twenty three years later, talking about it. <laughs> And, you know, I haven't even heard of Grease 3 until you brought it up at the beginning of the show. So, Well, I don't know that that's a good argument that because it's 23 years later when we're talking about it because we did do the Sinbad movies and all that stuff, too. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, true. but it's a 90s movie we're still talking about, so. Yeah. You know what? Maybe, maybe that is a good point. I don't know. 
I, I'm not making points here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Matt, man, we enjoy you coming on. Like I said, it's been a long time coming. And uh, just take a second, tell people where they can find your show, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, I'm glad I finally got to come on. Um, so my podcast is The Bad, The Weird, and The Cheesy, and I'm all over the place, Spotify, iTunes, uh, p- pretty much all the places you can find podcasts. I kind of finally got myself out, out and put them on there. Um, yeah. I'm I'm on Facebook some. You can find me on there. Um, <laughs> on, some. <laughs> on, on, Instagra- on Instagram, I, that's where I post a lot of my posts because I post a lot of stuff that's not weird and cheesy on there as well so I can broaden my spectrum. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I'm on I'm on Twitter as well, so I'm all over the place. But yeah, if you want to check it out, I'm all over the place for wherever you look, probably listen to your podcasts. Yeah, and so definitely you if you hit up any of the Hail Ming stuff, we can we can direct you for sure. You can become a member of of his group too, and then we can all enjoy the community. At first, you don't get along, and then your friends. Your friends. <laughs> Why have we not done three amigos? I don't know, man. Sounds like a next episode to me. Oh, gonna make it. Gonna goodness. make it. Gonna make it. Not gonna make it. <laughs> not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so great. Great. You shot the invisible swordsman. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we both shot up. That's right, people. There's an invisible swordsman in cube. I just gave away another another point. Boiler there, alert. So. That's yeah. how people keep dying. <laughs> All right, folks. We're going to cut on out of here. We will see you next time. Adios! <laughs> Hello, minions. I can't hide it. I love Cube. A sci-fi masterpiece, its combination of simple plot and character-driven drama has always impressed me. The captors are silent, unknown. The enemy is soon revealed to be fellow man, running endlessly through a prison of its own construction. I've always felt that although the film provokes deep existential questions, there was something there, just under the surface, that I was missing. I just realized what it was. Quentin, Levin, Worth, all the characters are named after prisons. Alderson Federal Prison Camp, Centre Penitentiary in Wren, Holloway Women's Prison, Leavenworth Prison, San Quentin State Prison, Kazan Prison in Russia, Sometimes these things are so obvious we miss them. So stay strong, minions, and remember, as always, actions speak louder than catchphrases. Good night. Members of the audience will receive the following classic curves by Biddos. The Pants for Feel Good Company. A gift certificate from Maru Chan Ramen Noodles. Rice Aroni. All guests receive a copy of the Hell Ming Home Game. Thanks to the creative minds and special appearances of Mark Allison, Jeremy Finch, and Jacob Kennedy. Hell Ming is a proud member of Legion Podcasts. Check out all the great shows at legionpodcast.com. Hail Ming is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Legion Podcast. This is Dan Pardo saying good night. So, Matthew, how are you enjoying your your look behind the curtain? (laughs) 